Like Bill, Dr. Silkworth lost everything in the crash of 29, but he found a home in a drying out place called Towns Hospital. He had a knack for working with drunks. And though he couldn't offer a cure for alcoholism, he treated it as a disease. No formal introductions today. I agreed to abide by the rules of Alcoholics Anonymous. Uh, uh, Bill, do you want to just start right out by telling us how and when you founded AA? Yes. <laughs> if you don't mind, I'll start a little bit in the middle. All right. In the uh, summer of 1934, I lay in a drying out hospital on Central Park West. My wife was downstairs talking to the doctor, and she was asking the doctor why I couldn't stop drinking. And the good man was obliged to tell her that I had an obsession of the mind that condemned me to drink against my will, so that if the drinking was continued, uh, I would be destined to go mad or to die. In fact, he told her, frankly, that she would soon have to lock me up uh, if my life was to be saved. When the psychiatric asylums became almost the only resource that alcoholics had outside of jails in the, in the opening decades of the 20th century, there was a sense, there was a, there was a kind of belief that there was, there was no such thing as alcoholism as a primary disorder. There was only untreated underlying psychiatric illness. So what that meant was alcoholics were subjected to mandatory sterilization laws along with the mentally ill. It meant they were subjected to the heydays of electro and chemoconvulsive therapies. It means they were subjected to, to psychosurgery, particularly prefrontal lobotomies. On the theory that there was an alcoholic personality, and if they altered that personality by brain surgery, that it would cure their alcoholism. I well remember leaving the hospital, and I suppose it was mainly...